Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. Today I want to show you this really massive silicon controller rectifier. Uh, it is a gift from a friend channel tested to destruction. I highly recommend this channel and the link is on the description of my video. This device is basically a controlled switch and these come in different capacities and sizes from very small ones the size of a signal transistor and another this is another example higher capacity another even even larger and this one that can handle continuous currents of up to 250 amps and voltages of up to 1200 volts. But it can handle peak currents, instantaneous currents of 9000 amps. Next time you need a PCB for your electronics project, Consider using the professional services of JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the world leader in PCB fabrication. You can order online. You just need to register, upload your Gerber file, and wait a few days for your PCBs at an unbeatable price. This is the basic configuration of a thyristor used as a switch. This is the symbol. We have the anode, cathode, and the gate. So here we have a DC source, and this is our load. It can be a lamp, a motor, or another device. Normally, the current cannot flow through this way because the SS, S, uh, SCR or thyristor is open. In order for the thyristor to close and permit the pass of current, we need to apply a small voltage or current to the gate. Therefore, we have this switch. When we press the switch, a small current flows through the gate, the thyristor closes, and the current can flow through or load. I have here the, the circuit. The thyristor is connected as in the diagram. And our load is this incandescent lamp. And I have no switch. I will use uh, touch the, the wires. And let me turn on the power supply. As you can see, no current is flowing because the thyristor is open. But when I uh, touch the gate, the current will flow through the gate and then the load is now on. This particular unit is actually two thyristors in a single package. As we can see here in the diagram, we have two thyristors connected in series. And the reason is that these modules are often used in a three-phase rectifier. As you can see in the diagram, you need three modules like this one in order to make a three-phase rectifier. However, we can, of course, use a single thyristor from this module, one or the other, simply by choosing the connections. Here we have the connections for the anode and cathodes, and here we have the connections for the gates. Okay, let's test it. I have made the connections as in the previous case. This is our load, but now I am using a separate power supply for the connection to the gate because I plan to use this module for high voltage uh, applications and therefore it is better to have a separate uh, supply 
which is low voltage, such as this 9 volt battery, in order to be safer. And we have a common ground of both uh, sources. And now connecting to the gate. Oh, this is off. Okay. There you have it. Our load is, uh, current is flowing. Therefore, the thyristor is in good condition. Since this device can handle source currents of up to 9000 amps, it is perfect for experiments with a high voltage capacitor bank. When we discharge a capacitor, the current flows in just a fraction of a second, the time that takes for the capacitor to discharge, but it is a very high current. It can be hundreds or even thousands of amps, depending on your capacitor bank. But this device is able to handle that very high current. Because as a normal switch, a mechanical switch, will simply fail with such a large current. So I plan to make a high voltage capacitor bank using nine of these. This capacitor is uh, 2400 microfarads at 450 volts. So using nine of these capacitors, I can make a bank of around uh, 1000 volts in order to make uh, different kinds of high voltage experiments and use the thyristor. But in the meantime, let's test the thyristor with a single of these cups. Okay, let's test the thyristor. I will discharge the high voltage capacitor on this little piece of aluminum foil because of the very high current that will circulate through the foil, it must vaporize. I, I am using my high voltage power supply. I made it in a previous video, uh, but I give you the link in the description of this one. The multimeter indicates the voltage in the capacitor and I will charge it at around 300 volts. Okay, the thyristor worked great, so I will make the high voltage capacitor bank to show you in a forthcoming video and make several high voltage experiments. Thanks for visiting my channel, I hope you liked this video and see you in the next one.